my name is uh, Jurgen van Gils. I'm uh, one of the founders of uh, Vision BI. Uh, we started with uh, working with Yellowfin about six years ago. Um, so we are uh, a partner from the start when we uh, started Vision BI. Uh, Gawi Herbst is presenting for you today. Uh, he's living in South Africa and recently joined uh, Vision BI and has more than four years of experience with, uh, with Yellowfin. Um, so yeah, why now the Yellowfin 9 new features webinar? Because Yellowfin is already there for about, uh, yeah, about the beginning of this year. Uh, we see that a lot of customers uh, and partners already upgraded to 9 and some of you didn't. Uh, but also a lot of you are not familiar with all the new features are not using uh, them uh, at this moment. And um, yeah, that, that's maybe a pity because it's it's really an, uh, a great enhancement is in this version. And it makes that uh, Yellowfin is really close to action. So it's not only visualizing reports and dashboards like you see in the back over here, those beautiful dashboards, but it's also taking action on the dashboards. And that's something that uh, we will address during this webinar. And this is uh, the first webinar of a whole series. Uh, this webinar will show some of the new features that, that are really important. And the other webinars will dive into the deep of specific uh, features that were mentioned uh, to and shown today. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to uh, Gabi. He is uh, already um, uh, sitting uh, ready. And um, so I have to make sure that his presentation is on the screen. So I'm going to hand over now to uh, Gawi and um, yeah, enjoy this uh, session. Uh, before I forget, you can answer questions or uh, have questions that you have uh, and put them in the question um, bar on the side of the screen. And we will address them at the end. So. Success. Okay, thank you, uh, Jurgen. I'm uh, Gawi Herbst, the Yellowfin consultant at Vision BI. And uh, as Jurgen mentioned, we will be taking you through some of the major enhancements of Yellowfin version 9. Yellowfin is really packed with, uh, with new features and functionalities. Um, so it's really impossible to go into the detail of each and every of these features. So what we will be doing is schedule follow-up sessions and uh, and to go into much more detail afterwards. So uh, to start with uh, um, the dashboard canvas, and this is probably the the biggest enhancement and the biggest feature in Yellowfin version 9. In the past, uh, with previous releases, you were limited to a, to a grid style layout for your dashboards. And in version 9, they've introduced this freeform canvas uh, we can basically do anything that you want. You know, so there's no more uh, columns and you only need to put your reports in those specific columns or rows on your, on your dashboard. With the freeform canvas, you can add text, images, shapes, icons, um, anything you can imagine you can put on, on your dashboard. And there's even action buttons so you can drive action from your dashboard and, and uh, complete your workflows. Other announcements on the dashboard is the uh, new uh, enhanced properties panel. Um, so this is a panel that you have introduced where you can change the, the properties and the settings of each and every object and even the dashboard canvas uh, directly from the dashboard. They've also introduced a new feature called report branching. And what this will do is it will allow you to create more than one or to put more than one visualization of your report on the dashboard at the same time. So in the past, if you wanted to show the, the table as well as your um, graph on one dashboard, you had to copy the report, and then you have to maintain two separate reports in order to do that. With branching, you can now put one report on the dashboard, but multiple visualizations. And the advantage of this is Yellowfin will only execute the SQL statement once against the database. So this should definitely improve the performance as well. Uh, they've also uh, introduced automatic filter linking, and this is really making things a lot easier. So in the past, again, when you had filters on a dashboard, you manually had to go and link each of those filters to the reports. With version 9, you just select the filters that you want on a dashboard and Yellowfin will do the rest in the back end. So this really saves a lot of time. Um, on your, your dashboard, you can now also have snapshots and bookmarked reports. So what does this mean? A snapshot 
is basically a, a photo or an image of your report at a specific point in time. So you can put that on a dashboard and the data will never change. A bookmarked report, this is where we can preset our filter values, store that as a bookmark, and then show the bookmarked report on the, on the dashboard. So the data is already filtered. Um, they've also extended this and introduced dashboard uh, filter bookmarks, meaning on a dashboard, you can set your filter values once, every time you open the dashboard afterwards, you can just open, click on the bookmark and your filter values will be applied. You also no longer have to go and edit a dashboard in order to share the dashboard with other users or even change the security settings. You can do it directly using the dashboard actions. They've also introduced a new feature called preview mode. And this one I'm really excited about because now as a developer, you can see what the final product will look like, what your end users will see while designing the dashboard. So you don't have to go and save or publish the dashboard, look at it and then go back into edit mode again. Uh, there's also a full screen mode and this is especially useful, especially when you're doing um, presentations. So you can use the entire screen for your, for your presentation. So what I'm going to do now is switch to Yellowfin and uh, then just give you a short demo of, of these features. Um, so if you look at this dashboard, immediately you can see here at the top, we have this blue bar here, and this is where we have our dashboard tabs on the top. So this is new. Also, um, the existing dashboard canvas layout, this was the fixed grid layout. So you could create nice looking uh, dashboards, but you were still limited in what you could do. Um, on the left here, they have the updated filter panel. So you can see this is a more advanced or, or modern look and feel. So this really adds to that, that experience for your end user. I'm going to click on this Lucorio dashboard and just show you the difference. So immediately you can see in version nine, um, where we don't have that fixed grid layout, I can now create basically anything that I can think of. Here we have reports, we have text on the dashboards, um, background images, anything you can think of. And you can really position your reports where you want on the report. So you can create that pixel perfect uh, uh, dashboards for you. I'm going to edit this one. I'm just going to a little bit more detail on the new canvas. So in edit mode, I have this uh, properties panel on the right. And this is also new. So we can move this properties panel around. We can hide it if we don't want to see it. But basically this allows us to change any of the settings of any object on the dashboard. And it's also, also contextual. So if I click on a text value here, you'll notice that this will update and I can go and change the size and the position or even the background formatting for the specific object that was um, selected. On the left here, this panel can be used to uh, create our sub tabs. We're going to click on the plus button here. So there you can see these are our old fixed grid layouts, but I now have this uh, blank canvas as well. Then other options here is I can add my reports. I can add filters to the dashboard. So the filter object is now also almost like a widget. So you can move it around and place it inside the dashboard canvas. You can still have it on the left and the right if you want to, but uh, it just gives you that uh, extra flexibility. Also, we have text, graphics uh, in the form of your shapes, lines and icons. And lastly, we have our images that we can add onto the dashboard as well. So what I'm going to do now is add a new report. I'm going to search for it. And then drag the report onto the canvas. Now, when I do that, the first thing you'll notice that's different is I now have to choose the visualization that I want on the dashboard. So this is really nice. I can now decide, do I want a table or any of the graphs on that specific report on my dashboard? I'm going to select this one and there we go. So from here, I can go and reposition it anywhere I want, resize it and make sure this fits into my, my dashboard picture. Okay. Again, when I click on this, on the right here, we have our properties. So this is where we can change all of our uh, properties for the specific dashboard. I can also right click on this report and from here create a copy of it into my, um, my clipboard 
I can branch the report, and this is where we have more than one visualization of the same report, but the SQL statement will only run once. Uh, I can also directly edit the report from my dashboard, so this is also new. And then we have other options here to align the dashboard and arrange it, for example, bring it to the front or send it to the back. Okay, so this is our new dashboard canvas. Then um, another feature that was introduced is uh, the code mode. And this really allows uh, you to extend the dashboard's functionality. Now, this is more positions for the developers. Uh, you need some uh, background in programming, um, but luckily you don't need to go and learn a new proprietary language. So basically, Yellowfin allows us to use uh, the familiar languages like HTML, JavaScript, and style sheets. There's also a, a, a toggle at the top where you can switch between visual and code mode. And any change that you make in code mode will immediately reflect on the visual uh, side of your dashboard as well. Then they've introduced a contextual and state-aware API. And this is really where the magic happens. So this is where you can access any of the components or objects on your dashboard, even the dashboard canvas. And you can um, create listeners and trigger events based on that. Um, so this, again, uh, extends the functionality. Code widgets allows you to um, build the code once in your uh, code mode and then store that code in a library of, of, of a code library, basically. So that allows other users to go and reuse the code that your developers have uh, for a And then on the action button side is we now have buttons and from here we can create custom workflows. Now, Yellowfin ships with some out of the box functionality. So you can, uh, using no code, open a new report or a new tab. You can even reset the filters on your dashboard. With code mode, these actions can be extended. So then we can pull and push data from external applications. For example, we can update data in our database or, or create a new marketing campaign based on what we see on our dashboard. So to show you that, um, here we have our code mode toggle at the top. So currently we are in the visual mode. I can now click on code and you'll notice that this is where I can um, make my code changes. Uh, the editor here is my HTML, I have my JavaScript part, and lastly style sheets if I want to change the look and feel of my objects in the dashboard. On the left here, I have a panel of all of the objects on this dashboard. So if I click on any of these, you'll notice that Yellowfin highlights that part of the code for me. So it just makes the life of a developer a little bit easier. I'm going to go back to the visual mode and then also show you uh, the action buttons. So here we have action buttons to add a new one to our dashboard. I can click on our widgets uh, icon here on the left and then go to buttons and add any button to the dashboard. OK, on these buttons, there's the pre built functions that I can use. And again, for these, I don't use any coding and I don't need coding skills to do this. So from here, opening a new sub tab or the next sub tab, reset my filters, and I can even go to an external URL as well. To, to show you this and demo this, I'm going to use this preview button at the top. Again, this will allow me to see what the end users will see while I'm still busy developing my dashboard. So here is the final look and feel. I can then use this button if I want more information on whiskeys, for example, click on it and it will open a new sub tab for me. OK, and here I will see everything related to the whiskey uh, uh, reports on my on my dashboard. On the left here or the right, sorry, um, I have a signals object. Um, so again, this is a widget that was developed by Yellowfin. Yellowfin ships with this out of the box. And this is also a contextual widget. So it will allow me to only show the user the signals that's relevant to whiskeys in this case. OK, I can click on any of these signals. And from here, it will then go to the signal management screen where I can go into detail and investigate what happened. Now again, signals is a product that uh, will run smart algorithms against your data and highlight changes and anomalies in your data. It will then surface those changes to the user and you can go and look at the detail of each and every signal. Elephant will also give you the relevance of each signal compared to the other data. 
and it will generate charts for you um, where you can, uh, where Jennifer will try and explain why that data changed in your data. There's also a, a, a narrative that is included here as well for a little bit extra context. Cool. I'm going to go back. And then back to our presentation. So next, Yellowfin also introduced blueprint functionality. Now in the past, if your business user wanted a new dashboard, they had to do a design on a piece of paper and email that to the developers. So it's a back and forth communication to get that final perfect dashboard layout. With version nine, um, with the use of Blueprint, all of this is now done in the Yellowfin environment, in a secure, uh, governed environment. You can collaborate on your designs and it's really a, a simple drag and drop interface. So you can just drag a report onto the dashboard um, or a placeholder for a report onto the dashboard. So you can give it a little bit more detail so the developers will know what, uh, what you mean by that and then they can use that as a spec to develop their dashboards. With uh, Blueprints, we also have quick charts and this is where you can create charts directly from the dashboard. Um, this is a really simple um, process to create a new report with a couple of clicks. You can actually create reports automatically. And uh, Yellowfin really follows the 80-20% the rule here. So 80% of the features that you need most of the time is available in the quick chart folder. And for the other 20%, you can still go into the report developer and develop your reports from there. To uh, Yellowfin, I'm going to create a new dashboard here. I'm just going to give this one a name. Here we set our default data set specifically for quick charts. This can be changed. This is just the default. And then I'm going to choose the blank preform canvas. So now I'm in my dashboard design screen again. From here, I can add any of my objects, text, graphics to create that design, but I can also um, use the blueprint functionality and create the layout for my dashboard. So in this case, I want a number chart here. You can resize these charts. I can give each of them a name. So it's a little bit more descriptive of what I want in there. Uh, let's say we add a meter chart there. I'm also going to resize that one. And lastly, I'm going to use a line chart here. So this is what the layout of my dashboard should look like. And again, I can add images and anything uh, other than that, like text as well. So to create a new chart directly from the dashboard, I can use this link, create a report link using the simple report builder. There is the default view that we've selected. And again, it can be changed. And all I'm going to do now is select the dimension and the series. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, the invoice amount. And then I click on create. So it's really just of a few simple clicks and I have report uh, developed on the dashboard. Using our chart properties panel, I can now go and change some of the settings or properties. For example, the aggregation. Let's say we want the average of our sales and the chart will update. I can change the color here. And you can even add optional fields like a second series on the same chart. Or we can introduce a color field or add functions like trend lines and uh, accumulation um, lines. So in this case, I'm going to use the color field and here we will use demographic and there you can see now we have a line per demographic per year on our chart. So this is really how simple it is to create a new report uh, on, on your dashboard using the quick charts functionality. Back to our presentation. Next, Yellowfin also introduced Present. Now, Present is a uh, presentation tool similar to PowerPoint or Keynote, but with a major difference that you can add live interactive reports on your slides. So there's no longer a need to copy and paste reports into an external application to do your presentations. On your presentation slides, you can still use collaboration. Um, user security will still be applied. Uh, so if a user is not allowed to see the information, the elephant will automatically filter that for that specific user. And the nice thing about the presentation builder is it's using the exact same builder that we used for our dashboards. So um, it's one tool, everything that's available on the dashboard, for example, code mode, action buttons, all of that is also available in our presentation tool as well. 
You can save a presentation as a theme, which will enable you to use this for all of your future presentations as well. So you have the same look and feel uh, for your presentations. So just an example of that. I'm going to open this here in review presentation. And from here, I'm going to use this new button full screen to make sure I use all of the screen space for this presentation. OK, and here we go. So that's our first slide. Um, we have our other slides here. I can add links here as well. So if I click on introduction, it will go to that specific slide. And here's just an example of where we have an interactive report on our presentation layer. <laughs> OK, so this is really uh, enabling you to create beautiful looking presentations um, in, in your, your Yellowfin environment. I'm going to edit this. Just show you here. So here on the left, I have the same dashboard builder. All of my slides is available to me and all of the other widgets as, as well. <laughs> Then on the data discovery side, um, there's been a lot of changes. And, and, and I think the most notable is the default colors and fonts. So Yellowfin changed that. Um, you can also introduce your own fonts, so you can upload them into Yellowfin. Um, if you do an upgrade from a previous release, just make sure uh, that you do proper testing because, because of these fonts and colors, uh, your layouts might have changed on your reports. Uh, so just double check that. Yellowfin also introduced new chart types, uh, especially on the combination chart types, and they've updated the logic of the existing charts as well. So your charts will now always look nice, doesn't matter what size it is. Uh, for example, if you have uh, labels displayed on a chart and there's too many values, the labels will not be uh, uh, displayed on the screen. But the moment you have more space, Yellowfin will, uh, will show the labels again. They've also introduced a sparkline formatter, and this really allows us to show a trend of our data directly in our tabular reports. And here's an example of that. So basically, you can create a column chart or a line chart and in a tabular report on a specific cell have that, uh, that trend displayed. They've also extended the action buttons to the reports as well. So on a row level in a table, you can now trigger an external action. Um, so this is also a really nice announcement. On the broadcast side, they've introduced a new uh, save to disk broadcast. And what this will do is it will store the report on a server somewhere instead of emailing that report to your users. So this is just a new extra option there. You can also look at the history of your scheduled runs. So you can see if something went wrong and if so, uh, what went wrong? How can I fix that? I can see who received my broadcasts and for each individual user, again, I can see that they receive the broadcast, yes or no, and if not, um, what was the problem there? Yellowfin added multi-tab functionality uh, and, and this allows you from the browse page to open multiple reports in more than one browser tab or uh, browser window. So you can now compare your reports side by side if you, if you need to. Yeah. On the signal side, again, signals uh, will run that uh, algorithms automatically on your database and highlight the changes as they happen. Um, so these are not events that you know of. It's Yellowfin will scan the data for those events. And uh, in the version 9, there's a new type of signal called step changes. Now, a step change is basically when uh, your time series data uh, goes from one stable state to another stable state. And these uh, states can go up or down. If it's a higher above the previous one, we call it a step up. Otherwise, it's a step down. In uh, Yellowfin, you can change the threshold between these step changes as well as the uh, transition period uh, between them. OK, so this is really um, what we wanted to tell you today, and in summary, in version 9, there's really no limits. OK, so anything that you can think of, you can do in version 9. Uh, it allows you to build a, a completely differentiated uh, analytics experience using dashboards that now drives action. So you no longer have to switch between applications. You can do everything from within your Yellowfin environment. You can extend the dashboard capabilities using uh, code mode. 
And again, your developers don't need to go and learn a new proprietary language. They can use the familiar languages like HTML, JavaScript, and style sheets um, to make uh, those beautiful looking dashboards. We've also noticed that there is a big focus on the design and visualization skills. So these days, uh, the look and feel of your dashboard and your reports is just as important as the data. And uh, your business users can now, using Blueprint, design and collaborate on those dashboard designs, all within a governed prototyping environment. We can communicate our data and our insights using the new tool present, uh, and lastly, signals, uh, the signal changes that was, that was introduced. Okay, so with that, I'm going to allow some time for, for questions. Um, we'll try to cover as most of them as possible. If we don't get to all of them, what we'll do is we'll take it offline and uh, get back to you afterwards. So, uh, Jürgen, are there any questions yet? Yes, Gary. We have some uh, uh, questions. Uh, I already tried to answer uh, some of the questions, but it's good to repeat them uh, so everybody can can hear and, uh, and maybe also learn uh, from these uh, questions. So I have a question from uh, Richard from Cariso. Uh, he's asking, uh, are there any best practices, uh, tips on how to handle multilingual or multilanguage users from a Canvas dashboard? Uh, for instance, report title, text, uh, widgets, uh, etc. And um, from my knowledge, and, and please uh, add your comments, uh, Gary, it's not yet possible to uh, have the text fields uh, in multi-language, but what you could do is work with code mode, where you uh, ask or uh, test the language setting of the specific user and display based on HTML, the appropriate um, uh, uh, language uh, in the dashboard. Do you agree uh, with correct. that? Do you have another insight? Yes, correct. With code mode, that should be possible. You'll often have the language translation, but that's only available on your reports. So it's not yet on your text fields on the uh, on the dashboard canvas. No. Okay, you can obviously do that with your view uh, in Yellowfin. If you have uh, a, a native language setting, you can use the uh, translator in Yellowfin to translate uh, the data inside of your report that's in your yes. report, not in your dashboard. Yeah, not on the dashboard. Correct. Okay. Next question, and uh, this is an interesting, also an <laughs> interesting one, also from Richard uh, from Cariso. Uh, will there be a, a relative size option available anytime soon for Canvas dashboards? We have users with different screen sizes and are con find uh, to take into account the smallest screen size, lowest resolution. So if you have a customer indeed running on 800 by 600 still, then you have to mm -hmm. create your dashboard based on that size. Otherwise, it will fall out of the, the screen. Um, what I know is um, uh, in, in the UK, uh, there's, a, there's a guy called Nathan. He built uh, actually a dashboard. Uh, that uh, automatically resizes based on the screen size, because if you also want to use it on a phone or an iPad, um, that's different sizing, and maybe you don't want to have uh, the, the images next to each other or the, the, the graphs, but under each other. So I know he built a, um, a demo for that. So uh, Richard, I think uh, it's, it's good to um, have you uh, that uh, send over that demo or uh, have you in contact uh, with those guys to see how they done it and uh, so you can benefit uh, from that. Yes, 100% agree with that. So basically with code mode, you can do all of that responsive design, uh, but it is a coding function. It's not a standard function in your iPhone. Yes, okay. Uh, I've here uh, one from uh, Esther. Uh, is it possible to link from one dashboard to another dashboard? I answered her, I said, uh, yes, eh, you have the action buttons that you can now place on the dashboard, but actually all items on a dashboard are um, actionable. You can have set an action on it, uh, so also an image or a, uh, a header or something, and you can say, okay, go to the next or to the previous dashboard tab, or you can also jump to a URL of another dashboard or report over website, uh, etc. Um, 
Do you agree on that, Gabi? Yes, correct. And the nice thing about these are it's really no code option. So you don't need any coding in order to do something like that. You know, so all you do, you copy the URL of the dashboard or the report and you link it to any object like you can say it's either an image or a text or even a button uh, to open those extra dashboard tabs. Mm -hmm. OK, and somebody is asking here, uh, has some difficulties with code mode. So uh, is uh, Vision BI able to support us with code mode and how hard is it to learn? And uh, yes, of course, we can uh, assist with that. We already experimented or experimented, used uh, code mode uh, uh, in practice. What we did, for instance, is uh, build uh, forecasting forms where you can enter your forecast in Yellowfin and not in an Excel sheet that you are going to import on the back end side of, in the database, etc. But uh, we, we have built that inside of, um, of Yellowfin. We also integrated Excel in uh, in Yellowfin. One of the features that uh, I know has been asked a lot to Yellowfin. Um, uh, also, we did, uh, but uh, it's still not available to have uh, Excels imported directly into Yellowfin. So we built our own version. So we can now select an, uh, an Excel sheet, import it into Yellowfin and display it right uh, away with a refresh uh, in the actual um, uh, dashboard. So uh, yes. Gary is now uh, putting something on the screen uh, about uh, what I just told you. Uh, it's uh, where you can select a row from a uh, existing record and it uh, pops up in the editable screen on the side. You can edit it and save it. So this is, is a way to have uh, your budget it's, uh, entered, for instance. Correct. So here um, we, we use the, the code mode using the context, uh, contextual API to access the individual rows uh, that we cl click on and then we populate this interface or this HTML form that was also created. So if I click on this Ronnie uh, first name, I can now go and change his first name on my dashboard and use the submit button, which will write it back to the database and also trigger a dashboard refresh option here. Um, so that the latest data is displayed here on my on my table. So like you can see, this is really useful. If you have those budget figures um, based on your sales, you can go and update that and directly from your uh populate the data in your in your database. OK, this is just yeah. one example of that. And code mode really uh, opens up uh, Yellowfin uh, because uh, you can have some visual enhancements uh, with entering data, but you can also set actions. For instance, uh, you have to follow up on a customer that's not buying anymore and uh, you have uh, a button behind it and say, OK, I followed up and uh, then a text box opens. You have to enter what you did, your action and then save it and then the line is, is gone. So it's really helping you in action based uh, uh, reporting. Um, and uh, another feature is we also uh, integrated with another solution called uh, uh, Freshdesk. It's a uh, um, an, an service level uh, application where you can enter your call. So if a customer sees something in Yellowfin and uh, you can just uh, press the button, it opens up a screen, you enter your call and it's automatically creating a ticket in the back end side and you can obviously report on that uh, immediately. So. Also, integrating in other uh, applications and platforms is it's really um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, available now in uh, Yellowfin. I wouldn't say it's easy. You need some programming skills, obviously, but um, yeah, there's, there's uh, hardly any limits anymore. And about the second part of the question is how hard is it uh, to learn? Um, um, yeah, there, um, you need uh, HTML uh, knowledge and some JavaScript knowledge. But a lot of these actions are also out of the box available just by selecting. So it's no code and that will uh, obviously uh, grow in the future. There will be a lot more options uh, available. Uh, so Yellowfin has its own uh, low code, no code uh, yeah, uh, uh, solution inside of, uh, of Yellowfin. Um, yes. I have a question over here and I believe one more and then we have to end up because we are uh, running uh, over time. Um, uh, it's uh, Twan, what is your experience migrating dashboards designed in an older version to the new version? Are uh, there lots of modifications required? Gary, maybe you can. Yeah, that's, that. uh, 
Um, that's difficult to give you a straight answer. 90% um, of the dashboards that we export and import works out of the box, no problem. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, especially with the new font sizes and the new default colors, uh, some of those layouts might have a problem in there. So it's always a good idea when you import the dashboard, just look at the layout and make sure it still fits on, on, onto your screen. But apart from the layout, uh, I've never had any issues importing or exporting dashboards to a newer version. You also have the option, um, if you're running an older version, to upgrade the entire Yellowfin version to version 9. And uh, when you do that, um, you can decide during the upgrade process, do you want to use the old fonts uh, from version 8 and, and earlier, or do you want to switch to the new fonts? So if you use the old fonts, everything should definitely work uh, without any modifications required. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, let's go for the last question then. Um, it's uh, from uh, uh, Richard. Uh, he's referring to the code mode example you just shown. Can this be used in client organization as well? And yes. probably he refers because the data transformation flow only works in the default environment and not in the client organizations. So I think his question is, does this work in client organizations? Yes. No, this definitely works in the client organizations as well. So you develop the reports once and, and then everybody, even a client of users in a client organization, can just view and run that report. So from there you can kick off any action. So there's no problem in doing that in, in client organizations. Okay, Gary, thank you. So these are the questions that we can handle at uh, this moment. If you have additional questions, uh, you can always uh, contact uh, us. And um, yeah, Gawi is, uh, is closing up. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, just to close off, uh, we've uh, scheduled these webinar sessions uh, and these are really intended to go into the de details. So this will be a deep dive into each and every of the settings that we talked about today. Uh, for example, if you look at code mode, we'll show you examples of how to do that in detail. And the same with signals. We'll explain all of the different types of signals and, and how to set up that signal process in the Elephant environment. So from my side, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we appreciated your time and we hope to see you in the next sessions. Thank you. Also from my side, thank you for attending. And uh, this session uh, is recorded and we can make sure that uh, you'll get a recording or maybe if a colleague of you uh, missed it, uh, you can send it uh, over. Uh, thank you and I hope to see you in one of the other uh, webinars we are running. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.